with my question is something along the same line, but if, if the depression that came through, does that, do you then lose identity when you shift from one to the other? No. And this is something that is a very strong fear in many spirits, is that they believe that when you start connecting to God, and there's many teachings on earth actually when you think about it, that teach you that when you connect to God you lose yourself. And in fact, and many of the New Age teachings actually say that in a way, don't they? They say that we are all fragments of God in an entity point of view. In other words, there's one entity, the universe, which we will call God, and then we are all just fragments of the universe. In other words, we don't really have a personal entity. And then that gets heightened as they progress towards the sixth sphere, this idea that we don't have personal, have a personal identity. Now, that is very much the case of where Buddha is at the moment. He's in this place where he believes he has no personal identity. And he calls that place Nirvana. But it's actually a very, very damaging place to live in because you cannot progress from that place without regaining your identity. So that's one of the things that Buddha will go through at some point in the future. Now, the, the issue then becomes what actually happens to identity. Well, what happens to identity is you as an entity just continue to expand. You continue, as you receive more and more divine love, you continue to expand not, in your, not only in your capacity to experience emotion or your capacity to experience an infinite universe, but you also expand as a soul, physically as a soul. You expand in your capacity of, of communication, of experiencing love, and all of these things just continue to expand. And your identity becomes even more firm than it has been before. And you realize the uniqueness of what God created in you. So you're still one of God's children, still being nursed, if you like, by God, developing all the way through, but you have now got these expanded capacities that uh, you never ever realised, or even intellectually conceived, were possible. So the issue that faces many six-year spirits, and I, and I know this is a bit of a digression, but it is something that these spirits want to know at the moment, so it is good to mention them. The issue facing a six-sphere spirit, so that we've got the spheres, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And the sixth sphere is the pinnacle of natural love. So it's the highest you can ever develop in natural love. So this is the pinnacle of natural love. You have many, many spheres above this, many dimensions above this, um, many dimensional existences, even as a half of a soul above that location. So you have the seventh, the eighth, and so forth, about that location. But to get to this location, you've had to develop primarily your intellect and your morals. You've had to work through moral issues and develop your intellect. You've also had to clear away emotions, but the way you've probably done that is not by utilising an emotional process, but rather using your intellect to work your way through emotional issues. So what happens is you can progress in that way, that's quite a slow progression. Some have done it in 50 to 100 years, and the spirit will progress from the first sphere to the sixth sphere in natural love. But historically, there are many that have taken many thousands or even tens of thousands of years to transverse those spheres or those dimensions. Now when the spirit gets to that location, so he's up here, he's obviously got a very, very highly developed intellect. He knows scientifically the physical and spiritual universe so well. You imagine living for 20,000 years, if you can conceive that, what you can investigate in that time. And as a spirit, you can just flip from here to here to here to here to here. It's not like you're constrained by transportation or cost. So imagine that. There's a huge amount of knowledge you have, right? So they have this huge amount of knowledge, but the problem is the knowledge is in their spirit body's mind and it has influenced the soul but the soul has a part of it that has yet to even begun to be developed in many cases and that is the soul, the, when the divine love enters the soul the soul begins a transformation process so you can think of 
this down here we are the grub, if you like. Up there, we're the best a grub could be. Right? So we're super grub. Right? But the transformation into the butterfly is a metamorphosis transformation. And it goes through this process where the soul begins receiving divine love and it starts changing. It, it changes from a human soul. And in fact, the spirit body of a person who's receiving divine love to the point of the seventh sphere changes. It no longer has seven chakras, for example. So all of this material on earth that talks about having seven chakras, primary chakras, where there's, what is it, 192 meridians or something like that, I don't remember exactly. But, and all of those things are truths only for a natural love spirit. As soon as the spirit starts receiving divine love, the soul itself goes through a transformation process. And this transformation process happens to you here on earth as you're receiving divine love too. The soul actually goes through a transformation process that affects the spirit bodies. And the spirit body starts having more chakras and some chakras actually start merging as well. You have more meridians as well crossing, crossing your spirit form. So as those changes occur, right, it looks to another spirit like you're different. You're a different model, if you like. There's a natural love model, and this one over here is a different model. I don't know this model, right? This model seems a bit different to me. And so there are many spirits in the sixth sphere who actually believe God created two types of entities who live on Earth. One type of entity that can only go to the sixth sphere, and another type of entity that can transcend the sixth sphere into the higher spheres. Now that is not true. And if you think about it from a point of view of love, it makes sense that it's not true, doesn't it? Why would God be have two people here on earth side by side who he created differently? Is that partial or impartial? Right? If it's partial, then is it harmony with love? Obviously not, right? But many of these spirits don't conceive that because they're intellectually, they're just looking at the results. They're looking at that person has that spirit form, seven chakras, all working really well, great. That person there, oh, they're pretty different. Um, they have different chakras and everything. Not all of them are working great either. <laughs> you know, because there might be emotional injuries still in the person who's received divine love, right? So they see them a bit differently. And so that spirit often then has its only its intellect to work its way through these issues. Now, can you see that if you just use your intellect, you're going to be bound by quite a few constraints. You're not going to be able to, you're going to come up with explanations for yourself that explain to yourself why there's these different forms. Aren't you? And you, some of those explanations might sound totally logical and you experiment them using your scientific methods, which are all to do with your mind, and they'll sound totally logical to you. And this is the reason why much of the information coming to Earth, coming from the sixth sphere, is still out of harmony with divine truth, because it's still not true. It's still just <coughs> experimental. So this sixth sphere spirit's in this experimental phase still. He's searching for this feeling, he can feel this feeling inside of him, I've left something on inside the house. Right? <laughs> something's, going, something's going on, I don't know what it is, that's the feeling he's got right inside of him. But he doesn't know how to investigate it, in many cases. And the only way to investigate it is for this soul part of him to switch in, the emotional part of him to switch in, and become dominant. That's the only way to investigate it. But he doesn't know that. He only thinks it's the intellectual way. And so can you see he may stay in that state for many years, maybe even hundreds of years, before he eventually gets to the point where he decides he's going to experiment with this emotional thing and experiment with this soul thing. And when he does that, the first thing he's told generally is to go back to the third sphere. Now can you imagine that for a moment? You're in a dimensional space that has you feel like you've got unlimited control of your external universe. And you're now being told to go to a space one, two, three levels lower than you. Because you missed out on some truth 
that you didn't receive at that point. Now, what quality are you going to need? Humility. You're going to need to feel one emotion that perhaps you didn't know everything. Because there are many spirits in this state who feel they know so much more than what you know here on earth, they feel they know everything compared to what you know. And yet, they don't know about this soul thing, this soul transformation. And so, many of them refuse to even make the investigation. And they'll search for another few hundred years about some alternatives to what it might be. And many of these spirits have been responsible for channeling of material, like the Urantia book, for example. You've heard of that? The Urantia book has been channeled from that location. <coughs> because it's a six-sphere spirit trying to understand the complexities of the universe that they can't understand until they receive divine love and understand that it's all very, very simple. Right? And they're trying to understand it with their intellect. So that is a major transition that many of the six fear spirits who are listening to this discussion even now have not yet made. And once they make that transition from there to there, they then will progress developing themselves emotionally at the soul level rather than spiritually at the metaphysical level. And then they will progress. And as they progress, their identity will become even more solid than it ever was before. They will understand themselves even better. And they will also start to understand conceptions of things from an experiential perspective. So it's a hot different, isn't it, talking about walking through that wall and actually walking through the wall, isn't it? Can you see that? One, one thing is just talking about it, but you beat your head against it and it never happens. The other thing is actually you do it. And that's the difference between them here and them here. Here, they're talking about what they think they know, but they haven't yet experienced it. It's only when they connect to the soul level connection that that starts growing here and they start experiencing things they've never experienced before. And one of those things, the primary one of those things, of course, is a divine love entering the soul. Now, as the divine love enters the soul, they start experiencing the effects of that love, transforming their soul and their spirit form, and they start observing that it's real. And then they start seeing that, in fact, as a creature, they are being transformed into this divine thing that they thought was a different type of creature altogether. And in fact, in one of the pageant messages, one of the natural love spirits said, I know there are these divine love spirits, but they just flip through the spheres like, I don't know, maybe God doesn't think they're very important. And that's why they're allowed to go through these boundaries, interstellar boundaries. The truth is that these spirits are developed in love, in divine love, a different type of love than the other spirits are developed in, and that enables them to transcend those boundaries.